What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be doing another thousand round review. Today we're gonna be looking at the Atlas Gunworks Erebus. Now, the Atlas Gunworks Erebus is a full-size 2011 pistol, or double-stack 1911 pistol, however you look at it. And if you're unfamiliar with that style of handgun, it has some pros and some cons, but in my personal opinion, the pros well outweigh the cons. Now let's take a look at it here and we'll go front to back to start off with. We're gonna start with the single port comp which separates it from a lot of its peers on the Atlas Gunworks roster there. It also has a four and a half inch light and slide with a full bull barrel and a full dust cover. Now one thing you have to remember is that this gun is designed for performance and performance alone, so we're gonna get a lot of super high performance features and parts on this gun. Light and slide creates low reciprocating mass, so it's lighter when it goes back and forth and cycles the gun. The bull barrel is extremely accurate. We come down here to the trigger, which is pretty impressive. You can get whatever color you want. We went with blue. This is the medium length, and I usually prefer the uh, long length, but these are adjustable for uh, length, so you can adjust them to pretty much whatever you want. We have single-sided slide lock, which works very well. It works on this pistol, depending on which magazines that you use. We have a universal optics mount here, and I have the SRO plate on it with the 5 MOA Trijicon SRO. Now, as you can see, there's no iron sights in this gun because it is meant for competition it is meant for open division so no iron sights necessary if your red dot goes down you pretty much just go to your backup gun or you just shoot it flush you can shoot through the dot or shoot through the tube pretty accurately out to 25 yards if you need to and you are uh, experienced in that form of shooting now on the back here we've got some serrations but for the most part I use the front ones because you don't want to keep banging on the optics so when I do do reloads I usually pop them into the gun and then I go over the top like that simply because it's just faster for me to go over the top and get my hand back on firing grip than it is to pop the magazine in, come back and then reassess. That's one of the reasons I use that technique and I do really like it and I have kind of strong hands so pinching the slide is no problem for me. On top of that we have a really light recoil spring on this gun so the slide is really easy to run. Back here we have the combat hammer which is skeletonized. We have the ambi safety, one on either side and you can choose which safeties you want whether you want the short one, uh, the long one if you want 45s which Atlas generally goes with but I think they offer standard safeties as well although I do recommend the 45 degree safeties simply because they allow more space for your support hand when you're shooting and your support hand does most of your recoil control so you can really get that guy in there and put her to work. Most of the time when people shoot and they have shitty recoil control, it's because they're not using your left hand. And the more space you have, the more friction that you have on the gun, the better it's gonna be. So I like that a lot. It forces your hand up and then you end up using the safety as a recoil control device, which is super nice as well. For starters, you get better recoil control. And for second, you ensure that you're never going to put the safety on by accident. A lot of times when people shoot 1911 or any single action pistol for that matter that has a manual safety on the strong side, a lot of times they put their hands under the safety because it feels more comfortable and then you inherently pop it up under recoil because the gun is popping up so your thumb goes up and you pop it on. There is a technique to it, just like lever actions or pump shotguns. Pump shotguns very unreliable if you don't know how to pump it all the way to the rear and back forward. Same with the lever action and same with manual safeties. I do wanna mention, before I go any further, that this is our giveaway gun. So if you're interested in that, the giveaway ends today at 11.59 p.m. All you have to do to get in or to win that is go down to the description and click the link and sign up. There's not very many people that have signed up for this one by comparison to all the others, so you actually have a lot better chance of winning this. So uh, if you wanna shoot one of the best Best guns ever made, I would recommend that. Again, that ends June 21st, 1159 p.m. So if you're seeing this video after that, you're out of luck. Thanks to Battlehawk Armory in Grimes, Iowa for helping us do this and helping us get one of these super awesome guns out to one of you guys. Now going down to the Atlas V2 grip here, we have a full aluminum grip or a full steel grip depending on which one you wanna use. This one has a steel grip on it for the added weight. Obviously it's an open gun, I'm not gonna carry it. And then it has these triangular texture on it which works really, really well. Now they do offer a harsh and a more mild texture on the gun as well. So if you wanna get super abrasive, you can. And if you want it super mild, you can. 
Uh, grip panels in there as well, and this is the first gun of this caliber, of this design, the 2011 platform I've ever seen with grip panels, which I absolutely love because I got the big hands. And in which case, we're running a strong side a grip panel, and then there isn't one on the weak side. It's kind of nice not only because it increases your grip circumference, but it actually gives you a little something to bite into, like your hand bites into it, and you can feel a little bit of ledge there, and it seems like it's easier to hold on to the gun. Now in the back here, we have a no grip safety at all, which is very, very nice. I like that because that tends to get in the way and it tends to cause malfunctions in weird, obscure shooting positions. If you don't have a completely full grip on it, sometimes that grip, grip safety can disengage and then you pull the trigger and you don't know what's going wrong and you have to problem solve. And I don't like that. I also like the more like E2 Euro-ish grip that that gives you. It gives you a higher grip on the gun like halfway between a 1911 and a CZ75. And then down here we have the standard mainspring with Atlas's uh, magazine well, which works great. Now what I want in a mag well, I want it to be out of the way. A lot of people say that they want it to help push their hand up, but I have big hands. So my hand's already pushed up there. And I like that the back of this is out of the way, so it's not uncomfortable for my hand. And I like that it actually does the job of a magwell. A lot of guns that you'll see, you'll see a magwell, but they'll have a big ledge around here because they didn't form fit it correctly. That is so many different magwells, I might add. They have a big ledge back here, they have a big ledge up front. And the whole point of this is to be a funnel for your magazine. So if you have ledges there that you're getting caught on all the time what's the point of having it so in my opinion it needs to be lightweight out of the way funnel the magazine and the magazine well on the atlas does that perfect trigger guard is awesome the undercut on the trigger guard feels really good you're not going to get any glock knuckle or anything like that obviously with standard 2011s we have just a regular old magazine release you can put in a uh, extended magazine release in there if you want the coating on the gun is really slick and it is one of the highest coatings you can get uh, the barrel is DLC'd, so very, very slick. That's one of the things you'll see in the Atlas Gunwork pistols is that they're made of super high quality parts, and not only are they super high speed, which is the whole point, but they're super reliable. And that's where I think Atlas separates itself from a lot of the 2011, 1911 makers. The fact that they make guns that are super reliable, this one included, we have about uh, 1,200 rounds for this now, and we've had no failures with 115 grain and 147 grain competition ammo. So that's pretty good. Some of that was lower powered, some of it was Blazer Brass, some of it was Fiocchi, and we do want to thank Manning and Sons for sending the Blazer Brass. We really appreciate them helping out with the thousand round review. Now, the accuracy of this gun, it is as if not more accurate than any gun we've had on the channel, as is the case with almost every Atlas gun works. Now, I know these are super expensive and I know these are hard to get, but I like to see what the top of the mountain is, that way I can compare every other gun to it. You don't really know how good a Canik is or you don't really know how good a Glock is till you've shot like the pinnacle of what can fire bullets. And in which case, I think Atlas, Infinity, uh, Hayes Custom, I think those companies do those things the best. And I think this is probably the best version of all those guns I've seen. We've shot plate racks at 50 yards, at 75 yards. I've shot the Texas Star at 50 and 75 yards with this gun. We've hit it 120 yards on an IPSC target with this gun. I mean, the accuracy is just unfreaking believable. Gotta recenter. Yeah, it's a long way. Mm hmm. Take that. And a good port of that is due to this bull barrel that we have here. You can see how thick that bad boy is. And they use super high quality steel for that barrel. But mainly it's your interface with the pistol, a, a la the red dot, which is the one point of aim, which is great. The SRO is my favorite optic, so of course I'm gonna shoot it well. But really it's gonna be this 1.9 pound trigger that they have in this damn thing, which is crazy. And I talk about the triggers all the time. Everybody knows who watch my videos know I'm a trigger snob. So of course I'm gonna like a gun that has an amazing trigger, and in which case, watch this. 1.9 pounds. It has completely worn itself in. It feels absolutely amazing. It's even better than the first shots. You can see there's the reset, probably the shortest reset you're gonna be able to get. That's the advantage of single action guns, especially 2011s, is they have super short resets. Now you can get a reset like that on a lot of 2011s. Uh, you can get a quick reset on an XC. You can even get a pretty quick reset on like a C2 or a CS from Staccato, but you're never gonna be able to get the quality of trigger that this is. Now those are better than regular guns. 
but this is much better than those. If you get my Staccato P out, it's a short break, it's a crisp break, and it's a light, short reset, but the reality is, is this trigger is probably still half the weight of a Staccato P coming out of the box. And to be able to do that, to be able to deliver that very light weight, that very crisp break, and that very solid reset really takes an artist and that's what i say like a lot of the times when you get these guns they are a freaking work of art and to be able to do that while well, on top of that to be able to deliver the reliability that this pistol has because a lot of times you get lighter and lighter triggers you have problems with ignition on certain primers and all that stuff to be able to get this trigger and this accuracy while maintaining this reliability is something that i just have never experienced in any other pistol besides this or svi SVI is a company just like Atlas Gunworks, but they take a year or two to get your guns out. They're even more expensive than Atlas. And I really do believe if you're looking for a gun that's this quality, this is probably the cheapest you can get into one. Because instead of putting on a wait list, instead of like ordering one, you can literally go up and you can get this pre-built and you can get it in a couple of months. Or quicker than that if you go into the giveaway. But the gun itself is super, super high quality. I keep saying that because it really, really is. Uh, the reliability the accuracy and especially the recoil impulse is very light now this is the lightest recoil of any gun I've ever felt maybe just a little lighter than the XC now some people say they like the XC better they're pretty close the fact that you can get in the XC for 4,000 and this costs you seven is something you should keep in mind because I do love the XC just think of the XC with a little more refinement like a little better controls it's a little more comfortable it's a little slicker and everything works just a little bit better because it's been hand polished and it's been dlc coded and all that stuff so let's get into some of the downsides first price these guns go for six to seven thousand dollars all kitted out and are they worth it in my opinion well you would have to shoot one to find out just how crazy they are and if you're going to compare it to a staccato xc you're you're going to get more performance but it is going to be much more money second is going to be that the grip can be too aggressive for certain people now my wife she doesn't mind this one because this is more mild because it's been worn in but a lot of times when you get them new they are pretty aggressive especially if you go the aggressive grip route like i did on my uh my athena that i use for competition super super aggressive it feels like you're holding like sandpaper in your hand which i like but some people don't the third thing, the gun's gonna be really freaking heavy. So this is like 44, 46. I can't really remember how many ounces, but it's gonna be significantly heavier, heavier than most guns let you shoot on par, a little heavier with a Shadow 2. And the reason for that is to control the recoil. Now, it's not quite as balanced as I would say the Athena is, and that's because we've got extra weight out here. We've got a steel dust cover out here and a big chunk of steel for the port. We also have a steel grip and we just added a lot of weight on but what you get out of that is a super super soft gun so if you're recoil sensitive at all this is an amazing gun to shoot i mean if you can shoot 100 rounds out of a normal handgun a day you could easily shoot 200 rounds out of this and not blink an eye a lot of times when we were testing this i was getting way above my daily round count and not really noticing because my wrist didn't hurt or my hand didn't hurt at all because it's just a super fun gun to shoot even like trigger fatigue you don't get it quite as much because the trigger is so light and it's so short you're not doing much so it's it's not like pulling a double action revolver trigger back and forth 200 times. So it's really a, it's a dream to shoot. I can't stress that enough. And it kind of sucks because I work with Atlas and we're partnering up for this gun. I got this gun for review and I didn't want to sound too like biased, but it's fucking hard not to because it's a really impressive gun. It shoots super well and it did everything I wanted it to do. And at the end of the day, that's what's important. If you get into this gun and you pay $7,000, it damn well better be the best shooting gun you've ever shot. And in this case, it is. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.